main man, main man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing, man. So, it's the next day, man. And uh, it's the day after the big heavyweight matchup between the WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder and the lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. Now, we all know at this point that the fight ended in a draw. It ended in a draw. And, of course, as I seen in my chat room last night in the post-fight video, it caused a lot of controversy. You got a certain segment of fans saying that Tyson Fury won. You even have a certain segment of fans saying that Deontay Wilder won. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy mixed up within this, this fight. So, you know, I already feel as though and I already put it well on record that I feel as though Tyson Fury pulled out the victory. It was a close victory, but he pulled it out. I thought he did enough to win that fight. Take in mind when I did that video. I ain't see no CompuBox numbers. I didn't sit back and watch and see well, well, who outlanded, who, who outdid this, or who outdid that. When I watched that fight last night, I went off the sheer eye examination. You know what I mean? I went off the fact that Tyson Fury controlled the pace, controlled the real estate, the distance. He, he did more in that fight just by me watching that fight to give it to him. He was making Deontay Wilder miss. He was avoiding all of Deontay Wilder's hard shots until the shots that really caught him that knocked him down with a, also a handful of shots here and there. But for the most part, he was more the more evasive fighter, controlled the pace, controlled everything, the real estate, everything. Kind of styling on Wilder a little bit, you know what I mean? And so that's what made me want to give it to Tyson Fury. And in my chat room last night, I noticed a lot of people kept bringing up certain numbers. And the thing is, let me just give a fair disclaimer. When you judge a fight and you look at a fight, the numbers are not the only thing that matters at the professional level. That's more of an amateur thing. You know, in the amateurs, fighters win based on how many punches are landed. And usually the punch, the fighter that lands the most punches, they pull out the victory. We're here at the professional level. A lot more things come into play when you judging the winner of a fight. It could be the punches landed and thrown, who outworked the other guy, you know, who controlled the pace of the fight, you know, who was the guy, you know, landing the cleaner, more decisive punching. A lot of things come into play. So you can't squarely just go off the numbers. So what I wanted to do today is that I wanted to go and research and see if the numbers reinforce what I believe that Tyson Fury did in last night's fight. I do once again believe that he won that fight. So I wanted to see, does the numbers reinforce my argument or am I tripping? You know what I'm saying? And this is coming from a Deontay Wilder fan. Still Deontay Wilder's biggest fan. Bomb squad all day. So let's take a look at the numbers. When I look at the numbers, right, I see that Tyson Fury outlanded Wilder by a total punches of 13 punches, 84 to 71. So Tyson Fury outlanded Deontay Wilder in the entire fight, no matter what kind of punch you're talking about. Deontay Wilder threw 103 more punches than Tyson Fury at 430 to 327. So even though Tyson Fury outlanded Wilder, he also threw 103 punches less than Wilder. Which is, wow, you know what I'm saying? Um, Fury outlanded Wilder also in nine of 12 rounds. And this is just total punches alone. Out of the 12 rounds, Tyson Fury outlanded Deontay Wilder in nine of those rounds. That's a pretty significant margin, in my opinion. Now, I know which I may say, well, main man, main man, though he may have outlanded Wilder in a lot of those punches, in a lot of those rounds, how much of those, you know, punches were decisive punches. So, the one of the ways that we can kind of determine that is going back and looking at a lot of the power punches that were landed. And when you go to power punches, it turns out that Tyson Fury outlanded Deontay Wilder in power punches 38 to 37. Fury outlanded Deontay Wilder in six of 12 rounds in power shots. That's over half of the rounds in the fight. And out of the remaining six, four of those rounds was even, which means that the remaining two went to Deontay Wilder. So out of the 12 rounds, Deontay Wilder in power shots only outlanded Tyson Fury in two rounds, 
four remaining even, and six going to Tyson Fury. So even in the decisive punching category, Tyson Fury is taking that. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention that Tyson Fury's percentage in overall in, in power punches was higher than Deontay Wilder's in every round except the 12th. Every round. Overall, Deontay Wilder threw 182 power punches and only landed 31. That's only 17% of his power punches, which lets me know that Tyson Fury was being extremely evasive in there when it comes to Deontay Wilder's big shots. Tyson Fury threw 104 power punches and landed 38 at a 36 and a half percentage. So this tells me that he threw less power punches than Deontay Wilder, but landed more power shots than Deontay Wilder. Much more of the ac accurate fighter. At this point, when I'm reading now, I'm saying to myself, like, whoa, hold up. So you mean to tell me I didn't realize that Tyson Fury outlanded Wilder in power shots, though I knew that Deontay Wilder missed a lot of power shots because of the head movement of Tyson Fury and the movement of Tyson Fury. I didn't know that Tyson Fury still outlanded him. That's incredible. Then you look at the jabs. Fury outlanded Wilder in jabs. 46 to 40. He threw less jabs, which another thing I thought that was surprising. I thought Tyson Fury, who was trying to flick his jab as, you know, most of the, a lot of portions of the fight, probably at least out threw more jabs than Deontay Wilder. But no, Deontay Wilder threw 248 jabs to Tyson Fury's 223 jabs. So out of the 223 that Fury threw, he landed 46. And out of the 248, that Wilder threw, he landed 40. Tyson Fury had the better landing percentage in jabs. 20% to 16%. So these are different categories of punching. And Tyson Fury is leading the way in all of them. Fury outlanded Deontay Wilder in 7 of 12 rounds. Wilder only outlanded Fury in three of five rounds and two of the rounds was even. So you see what I'm going here? So even in the numbers, the way things is looking. The Gypsy King outperformed Deontay Wilder in every area of punching, whether it was the decisive punching with the power shots, whether it was with jabs. The only thing that shines on Deontay Wilder when it comes to the numbers and punching was his body shots. When it comes to all three of those punch categories, Deontay Wilder outlanded Tyson Fury to the body. Whether it had been total, whether it had been jabs, whether it had been power shots. Deontay Wilder led the charge to the body. But we all know and we all said in our criticism of the fight that Deontay Wilder didn't throw nearly enough body shots. Something that he should have kept doing. I thought that was his key to victory right there. He was having major success to the body more than Tyson Fury was. He just didn't do enough of it. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to the numbers, in my opinion, man, Tyson Fury is leading the charge in the punch stats. All of this equates out to Tyson Fury outlanding Wilder by 13 punches. And that's the thing that has people saying, hold up, 13 punches. But when you go deeper and you look into it deeper, you see round by round, Tyson Fury was up on the numbers round by round for most of the rounds. No matter what category of punching you're talking about. So the numbers definitely reinforce people argument who say, well, you know, we think that Tyson Fury won. And a lot of the rounds where Wilder did outland Fury were the rounds that he knocked down Fury. Such as the ninth round and the twelfth round. Those were probably Deontay Wilder's best rounds. In the two 10-8 rounds, Wilder led Fury in every category of punching. Whether it had been total punches, whether it would have been body punches, whether it would have been jabs, whether it would have been power shots. In his two 10-8 rounds... 
those were the rounds that he shined in the most, at least when it comes to the numbers. So you would have had to hands down as a judge. Give those rounds to Wilder aside from the knockdowns. You know what I mean? 10, 8 rounds easy. So the, then the stats show that. So I think that the numbers to support a lot of arguments if you believe that Tyson Fury defeated Deontay Wilder, if that's what you believe. Hmm. Now let's move on to something about the judging I noticed. The one judge who gave the fight to Deontay Wilder at a score of 111 to 115, which had people sitting back like, what does this do? What does he see? I find something funny about his scoring. In the first four rounds of the fight, he gave all of those rounds to Deontay Wilder. 10 nine rounds. You know, that's how he's seen the fight. That's his prerogative. But what it does, it makes sense is that the other two judges out of those first four rounds only gave the first round to Deontay Wilder with the second, third, and the fourth going to Tyson Fury. So how does two judges out of the first four rounds see one, I mean, three rounds going to Fury and one round going to Wilder, but yet this dude, the Mexican judge, Alejandro Roshan, seen all four rounds going to Deontay Wilder. Not to mention in these four rounds, uh, as far as punches is concerned, Tyson Fury outlanded in total punches in all four rounds. When it comes to the decisive punching, if you want to use that, then you got to say, well, in that case, Tyson Fury walked out on top in two of those four rounds with the other two being even. So what the hell was Roshan looking at, man? If you want to say, well, out of those even rounds, which could have probably went either way, that's still just two of the four. You gave this dude all four. And Tyson Fury outlanded him in all four rounds. This ain't even including jabs and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there wasn't much body work in those four, first four rounds from Deontay Wilder. And out of those first four rounds, the one I find to be surprising is the third round. Because in the third round, total punches landed. Deontay Wilder only landed four. Where Tyson Fury landed 11. That's 36.7% landing percentage to a 12% landing uh, percentage. Take in mind, Wilder went four for 31. And Fury went 11 for 30. In total punches. And far as power shots is concerned... Deontay Wilder only landed two of 11. Tyson Fury landed four of 10. That's an 18 percentage to a 40 percentage. How the hell do you get that round to Deontay Wilder? What the hell was that judge looking at, man, is the key question. As for the rest of the fight, well, you know, it's pretty much a mixed bag, but they all pretty much lockstep with a few rounds here and there. But those first four rounds that he gave to Deontay Wilder, Gotta have you sitting back like, nah, no, I don't think that not one person, even if you gave a fight to Deontay Wilder, can sit back and say that he won all first four of those rounds. No way, no how, bruh. No way, no how. You hear me? So what was up with the judging? Suspect judging, man. That 111 to 115, very suspect. Very suspect, in my opinion. Giving that dude four all four rounds when each of the other two judges only gave him one. And that was the first round, which was more of a fill out round. That's just shaky as hell, bro. And the rest of the judging, like I said before, is pretty much give and take. Oh, most of them in lockstep with each other with a couple rounds here and there. Um, the one who actually gave the fight to Tyson Fury, my scorecard ended up being very similar to his. With the only exception is I actually gave Tyson Fury the seventh round after going back and watching that fight. Now, as for the last piece of controversy, the, the second knockdown. As for the second knockdown in the 12th round, where a lot of people said, yo, man, Tyson Fury was out. Tyson Fury was out. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the first, the ref should have just waved it off. I mean, I don't know what that ref seen. I've been and watched this now a few times. When that, by the time the camera angle switched and it went back to where the ref was at, the ref was already standing over top of Fury, counting Fury. But however, if you look, Fury's eyes are open. They're open and he's looking at the ref. 
I don't know what that ref seen. That ref, he should be trained to know if a fighter is coherent or not. And Fury was laying flat on his back, yeah. But he was looking up right at the ref. And by the time the ref got over there, by the time the camera angel, ca camera angle switched over there, the ref was already on four. He was actually, in my opinion, counting a little faster than me. Because I started to count once Fury went down and the camera angle switched. And then when it switched back, the ref was standing over top of Tyson Fury. And he was already on four, going to into five. By the time that ref got to nine, Tyson Fury was on his feet. When he said nine, right before, by the time he got to nine and was ready to go to 10, Tyson Fury was on his feet at nine. Maybe 9.2, 9.3, whatever. But he was on his feet by nine. And then the ref takes him and walks him over to the corner, gives him almost like a walk test. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's not act like we've never seen refs give fighters walk tests. They have. They have. A lot of people try to say, you know, man, man, you should have you seen the scene that he he gave him time to recover. You, you know, I don't play into that, man. It's the same way that when Wilder fought Luis Ortiz, I ain't playing to a dent. I ain't playing to that, man. No, the ref was giving him a walk test, seeing if this dude was coherent enough to walk. Refs are allowed to do that. You know what I'm saying? This ain't nothing to me that was overly controversial. And I told people when I first viewed the fight. I didn't see it because I was so excited when Wilder put him down. It made me jump out my seat, start yelling and screaming and doing a bunch of stuff that by the time I look back at the TV screen, I seen Fury back on his feet. But I didn't see anything super controversial about it at the time. And you telling me with a devastating supposedly knockout as people saying, devastating as it must have been, how the hell did Tyson Fury fight his way back in that round? If it was so devastating, why the hell, how the hell did Tyson Fury fight his way back in that round? That's what he did. Wilder didn't finish off Fury. Fury didn't look wobbly. Fury looked strong with the, for the remainder of the 12th round. Wilder probably punched himself out in a lot of cases with that. but Because Wilder, at that point, his stamina was drained. Fury started coming back in that round. So if he was so knocked out and out and this, that, and the third, you don't just get up like that. And the ref didn't take him to the side for that long. It was only like maybe at tops. What, three, four seconds at tops when he gave him that little walk test. If he was out as much as people keep talking about he is, then how the hell did he come back in that round, bro? Real talk. So that's what I saw, man. That's what I saw. I'll probably address this fight one more time in the live stream. And, uh, you know, hopefully a lot of people see this video. So by the time we do that live stream, they will already know my positions on these issues. But I think the numbers reinforce the fact that I believe that Tyson Fury won that fight. And for those who are saying that they cool with a draw, I'm semi-cool with it. I mean, I'm cool with it. I'm just happy that Bomb Squad keep, gets, gets to keep his title. You know what I mean? He still remains the WBC champion. That's all love. But at the end of the day, man, you know, that's being selfish, I think. Because Tyson Fury was robbed of a great, great moment in boxing history. You hear me? I think he was robbed of a moment. That we would have been talking about for many years. Dog, beating what he beat. Falling out. Giving up all his titles. Going through his mental health issues and depression and all of that stuff. Coming back and taking on the baddest man on the planet. And beating him. It would have been very reminiscent of what Muhammad Ali did with George Foreman. That story would have been told for a very long time. And I think that Tyson Fury got robbed of that moment. So when people just say, oh, the two knockdowns and... All of this stuff, or, or yo, man, it was it was a draw, and I'm cool with the draw. I say to myself, I, I can't be cool with the draw. I think that Tyson Fury commanded so many portions of the fight. Ring generalship, boxing IQ, making Deontay Wilder miss. Then on, on top of all of that, outlanding Deontay Wilder in pretty much all rounds. Outperforming Deontay Wilder in the punch stats. And people seem to me, they're reaching when they keep talking this knockdown thing. It's, it's starting to look like a reach to me, Joe. Especially when you go back and you evaluate this thing from a non-biased point of view. A lot of people can't tell what the hell really went down because of the camera angle switching. Stop trying to fill in the blanks, in my opinion. So I'm going to leave it there. To the next video, Main Man, Main Man. Don't forget to subscribe to Twitter, Main Man 511. Facebook, Main Man, Main Man Boxing Forum. Google Plus, Main Man, Main Man. I'll just leave these screens up there for y'all to see for yourself. There's the judges scorecards and those are the compu box stats. You can break it down. But if you're one of the ones that had Fury winning and your argument is that, look, I, I know what I saw. Now, here's the numbers that, that back up your argument. To the next video. Peace out.